Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Without do ah, I use it more so as not to strain my voice. Because I teach, 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 and then you, it's more of that. Ah, <laughs> so after a while, your your voice gets strained. And then your voice gets strained as a teacher. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Ya Rab, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi anzal Qur'an huda linnasi wa alamnahu wa zakayna bihi wa arsalan nabiyya al-mu'allim al-habib al-azam Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam liyubayyil lana al-ayat li'annahu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam akhlaqahu Qur'an فما أبين وأوضح لمعاني القرآن منه صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد مرتجم القرآن بلساني وأخلاقه الشريف وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نوينا بدراسة ناد لتفسير آية القرآن مناجة الله تعالى واستخراج العلوم من القرآن والتعاز بكلام الله تعالى واتمئنان به والزيادة الإيمان وتنوير قلوبنا وشرح صدورنا وابتغاء الأجور والثواب وحصول الربوان والرحمن ودخول في أهل الله وخاصته وغفران الذنوب وشفاء في أجسادنا وقلوبنا وسلاح أهلنا وأولادنا وسلاح المسلمين ونوينا من نواه النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وسلف الصالح I mention your intentions فاتحة الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لحظة أبدا على نعم الله وفضاله اللهم آتنا من لدنك الرحمة وعالمنا من لدنك علما سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوى تتعلم وتعاليم ذكر وتذكر النفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإفادة الاستفادة والحسنة تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن اللهم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلحام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغنى بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرم بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه ما نقرأه في هذا المجد ما قبله ما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا مغاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإلي رجع الأمور كلها يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقل المزاني الخوقوني وسر لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كمال الفتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع الكمال الإخلاص والسلق اليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والدفاء وخير الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين فاتحة
Amin, amin, amin. Alhamdulillah. Right, we are into Surah Bayina. Eh? Right, and last week, right, we, we took the first four verses. Right? We took the first four verses, three verses actually. The fourth verses, the fourth verse, you didn't really go into it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So Surah, surah Bayina, right, is unlike the other surahs in the Juz Amma, right, whereby Surah Bayina starts with a very long verse. Not a very long verse, but longer than the usual Juz Amma verses, right. Juz Amma verses tend to be characteristically short, right, short, um, and they tend to be uh, hard-hitting, right, and they tend to be, you know, uh, strongly impactful, right. And uh, not to say that Surah Bayina is not strongly impactful, of course it is strongly impactful, you know, impactful because it is of the Quran right? and everything in the Quran. The Quran hits the human being. The Quran strikes the human being right? from you know from from all angles. Right? But I think that is that is a uh, unique about Surah Bayina uh, with respect to the other surahs in Juz Amma, right? Is that Surah Bayina it starts off with a long verse, right? And Surah Bayina uh, it tends to be uh, it, 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 it is it is it is a Medinan surah, right? It's surah is Madaniya, right? Because it was revealed after the Hijrah. It was revealed after the, it was revealed after the hijrah uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is why from the beginning of the surah you see that uh, the people of the book are being addressed, right? And the people of the book are, are usually addressed right, in surahs that come after the hijrah, right? Because they they pose a very big <laughs> issue, right, to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the hijrah. Before the hijrah, they were around, right, and they were targeting Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were they were involved, right, but they were not as involved. After the hijrah, they were they were they were they, they were they were themselves you know an issue right with the Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa taala take a bit of a revision right from last week. So Allah subhanahu wa taala he begins and he says لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة right. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says that the people the people who disbelieve right of the people of the book right and the polytheists. Right, they would not be uh, uh, separated right, or, or broken up into groups until the clear evidence comes to them, the bayina, and the clear proof comes to them. Right, and we see here, you know, the, the bayina is explained in the next ayat. Right, so here we mentioned last week that they were actually together on the same page, right, and they were actually looking for the last prophet. Right, they were actually uh, they were actually united. Like on this saying that when the last prophet comes, that we will fight against uh, the, the, these policies. When the last prophet comes, he will bring victory to our religion. When the last prophet comes, and they keep talking about it. So when finally the last prophet came, they broke into fractions, right? Because there were those who were true to their book, and then there were those who were uh, liars, <laughs> outright liars, lah. Eh? Right? So it, uh, and they and they turn on the last prophet, right? Because even though they know, and we mentioned a few stories, strike right, of. Uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Salam, right? Whereby he, when he saw Rasulullah's face, he knew he was he was a prophet. There was no doubt, right? And there were other uh, Jewish rabbis, right? Who also, uh, when they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi they had no doubt that was indeed that he is indeed the prophet because they they have studied it, right? They have memorized this, right? And even if you that like, if you are familiar with uh, Maulid Ibari, right? If you're familiar with that Maulid in there, right? In there, there is a hadith that is quoted. And there's a hadith that is quoted in there that speaks about a Jewish rabbi who said that my father right, would actually keep uh, in his uh, box right, some scriptures that he didn't let anybody see. Right, it was secret. It was a Jewish rabbi who narrated this story. Right, so after his father's passing, uh, passing and passing away, right, he opened that box and he found that in there there were scriptures describing exactly the final prophet. Right, that it was kept in a box right, and it was not shared. It was knowledge that was hidden. Right, he didn't share the knowledge. So when he found that and he saw that, it was exactly the description of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa right, And you know, subhanAllah, uh, so they knew it. They knew it. it, wasn't, it wasn't, there was no argument <laughs> about it. All of them, and they knew that each other, they, they knew that everybody knew it. <laughs> right, so it's not even a secret amongst them, right? That the rabbis, you know, they will say, you know that he's a prophet, you know it. Right, but there will be those who will say, it, but we'll never believe in him. We will never follow him, right? Because why? He is not of us. Right? He is of the Arabs, right? And there you see um, the ugly head of racism. <laughs> right? Fla- is frank, you know, just to be, to be frank, la, it's racism. Right? That's, that's all it was. That was. The only thing that stopped them was that he was Arab. That was it. There was no other reason why they did not want to uh, believe in him. Because Allah in the same surah, Allah says, 
Wama wama umiru illa dia abdullah mukhlisina lahudin. Right. So and and why are you against him? Why are you so against him? He only commands you to what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa taala. We already know. You already know to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala. You're Jews. You all believe in. You all believe in the one true God. Right. And then and also uh uh hunafa wa yuqimu salat wa yutu zakat wa dalika dinul qiyma. Right. So Allah is saying, it's not it's not anything new the Prophet is bringing. It's the same thing that you know. Right, to worship God, to pray, and to give your zakat, and that is the upright religion. Right, so so here, you know, Allah subhanahu wa taala pulls them out and says, "Why are you against this prophet? So why are you so badly against this prophet? Right, whatever he's preaching is exactly what's in your book. It's exactly what your religion preaches. You know, exactly what Nabi Musa preached, Nabi Isa preached. It's exactly the same thing, right, from the same source, which Allah subhanahu wa taala. So why are you so against right, this prophet? What is his fault? Right, what is the fault that is in this prophet, right? That you that you just cannot accept, right? Then his is color, the color of his skin and the blood that runs through his veins, right? And that is how ugly racism is. Right? Racism can be so blinding and so ugly, right? That you, that that people, you know, these people are rejecting a prophet based on his race. Yeah, this you know. what did, like tell us, like what kind of reaction do you have? Towards racist, um, towards racist. Because like, sometimes <laughs> in the world we we try to educate people so that they are not racist. But yeah. How much? How much we try so they won't. It's human. It's racism. It's actually human nature. Yeah. Human beings tend to like their type, their kind, mm-hmm. and it's nature. It's, na- it's natural for human beings to just like their kind, <laughs> and not like the other. Mm-hmm. Right. That is what racism is about. But um, so it's through education. Right, that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that Akramukum inna Allahi atqaqum. Right, the most noble of you, if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the most, are the most pious of you, is by piety. Right, Allah judges by piety. So as Muslims, right, okay, okay, there's two parts to your question. One part is of course on ourselves. Right, on ourselves that when we see people around us, we don't see race. We should not see race, right, but we should see piety. And I'm also I'm gonna make do a comment on the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is a very important comment to to speak about, all right? Because the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are honored, right? By the blood, the one is by the blood, right? By the blood, we honor the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Because we are told to do so, right? From Rasulullah Sallam himself, right? We are told to honor the family, those who carry the blood of the Prophet Muhammad Zahra, all those Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are told to honor them, right? No matter what kind of Muslims they are. Right, that one is on Allah to judge. <laughs> Allah will judge that. We don't judge. We don't judge. As 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 we don't judge any other Muslim, right? You don't judge. That is on Allah to judge, right? But as believers, right, we honor the grandchildren of Rasulullah SAW. That is on one side, right? That is on one side, and there is a separate issue altogether, right? Um, racism, right, is is rather racism, right, is to um treat another person. Lesser, based on the blood that runs through their veins, right? It means lesser. Right? If you want to, you know, honor everybody, honor anybody, lah. Right? So, but it's on treating people lesser, right? So, as believers, we must remind ourselves, right, that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not see in from the hadith, Allah la yanzur ila suwadikum wa ila ajsadikum. Right? Allah does not look at your outward features, not to your physical bodies. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرْ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ right, Rather, Allah looks at your heart and your deeds. Right? So that is in our minds. Right? When you look, look at people, right? when you want to you know, befriend people, when you want to get close to people, you look at what? At the, 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 the goodness of them. Right? You want to get close to people who are good. Right? The goodness of them. That is what it is. You know, uh, but we don't see the skin color, and of course, if 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 that is still not driven into your into your heads, right? Then 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 think to yourself, say Nabilal, right? Say Nabilal, Abyssinian slave, right? But exalted, right? If Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Islam came to abolish right, all of this um, uh, racist uh, judgment that people do between each other, right? So so when it comes to it. Right, the scholars have commented that it is uh, wrong, and it is a type part. It is a type of, it is a type of um, slandering, right, or backbiting, if you were to make a negative comment about a race flat out, right, because whoever of that race does not fit into your negative comments, 
then you have slandered that person. And whoever of that race who fits into that negative comments, then you have backbitten that person. Right? So, it's just, just don't comment. Lah, right? It's basically, to play safe. And that is on our part. You don't do that. If you are being faced back with racism, right? as with any other negative trait in this world, that you might be faced by, right? So, uh, if someone is, is, is treating you in a, in a racist manner, right, then just hold yourself in dignity. Just, just hold yourself in dignity, right? And just do your best, right? Do what you can. Do, do your best. And people are people. Right? People, people cheat. People gossip. People slander. People are racist. People, people are people. <laughs> right? And they do all kinds of things, right? So, so even if you get upset about it, also, like, what can you do sometimes? Right? Sometimes, like, seriously, if it's your, if it's your boss... If it's your principal, my husband had a principal who was like that, like quite outrightly racist, right? What, what can you do? When you complain, you complain lah, if you want to lah, <laughs> right? But other than that, the, the, the way of the world is that there are good people and there are foul people. That's the way of the world. <laughs> and we have to just, you know, move on <laughs> with that. It's the, it's the way of the world. And just, you know, whatever lah, do, do, do your best. If you can't take it, then get out. You cannot go find somewhere else <laughs> to actually live. Right? But any, uh, the thing about, about the believer right, is that we know that what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better and everlasting. So when we do whatever work we do with what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter if someone else uh, keeps you know, uh, putting us down. Right? I mean, you're doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalas. Right? And that is empowering. Right? That's empowering because you, you, your only focus, your only goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Right, so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Not yet. <laughs> see, I see your face, which I'm not satisfied. <laughs> I'm just thinking of like the Palestinian. The Palestinians yeah. struggle. Yeah. And how, you know, recently Israel made their state citizens, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's Over like, every ruler is the king. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows where Allah is allowing it. Right, of course, we try our best in our setting of aid and whatsoever, right? But at the end of the day, Allah allowed this to happen. Right? Allah allowed them to take over the land, right? And of course, Allah knows where the Palestinians are also in the next world. Allah knows where they are in their, in their place, you know, in their places. Allah subhanahu knows why He does what He does, right? So, um, these people, they, they, will, they will know that there is a king over, king over the kings. <laughs> you imagine yourself in time of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Imagine yourself in that time. Right, the Fir'aun is killing every baby boy. We've not seen that in our time. If you, you, can you imagine if a president or a king was to declare every baby boy born in this country is to be slaughtered? Can you imagine living in that land? <laughs> like just because you're just because Bani Israel, there was racism also on Fir'aun's account. Right, I mean, Fir'aun, Fir'aun is like like he's Egyptian. He's not Bani Israel. Right? So, for example, you're Bani Israel and you're a boy, you're dead. You know, then, can you imagine? And that went on for years now, years. Fir'aun. Allah allowed it. But of course, Fir'aun held to account nah, for every boy that he slaughtered. Right? Fir'aun is held to account. They, are, they will be held to account. Of course, they are held to account. That's why the next world is there. The next world is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, nothing, nothing happens in this world without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing it, ever. Right, but we do as what we can, right, in whatever it our means. But at the same time, you know, you see, it's, our hands are tight, right, in a way. But Allah, Allah, His hands are never tight. And in fact, in the Quran itself, you know, it's, it, interestingly enough, I can read surah it is, right, but in the Quran itself, Allah says that the Jews, they say, the hands of Allah are tight. The hands of Allah is tight. <laughs> They, it's in the Quran, no, it's in the Quran. Allah actually quotes them saying, Allah's hands are tied. And Allah's, Allah's hands are not tied. <laughs> Allah's hands are wide open. And he gives, he gives to whomever He wants to give, and He takes from whoever He wants to take, and Allah can do it. And so now you're seeing this thing going on, and they seem to think they are triumphing. They seem to think, but above every king is the greater king. And the greater king will show himself. You know, he will, you know, Allah's, he's of Allah's name is Al-Muntaqim. Al-Muntaqim means the avenger. Right, the one who's waiting. The one who's waiting. Right, waiting, 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 waiting. Allah Allah, you know, that is, you want to see what happens at the end of this story again. <laughs> right, but you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will not let the, oppre- that let the oppressors triumph. Ever. Ever. But, and it's on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
You will see lah, inshallah. <laughs> Right, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. From small things to big things, from big things like this, and from small things to like workplace and family and whatever. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is just. Right. But we call on to Allah's mercy. <laughs> we don't call on to His justice. He's just with us, you know. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi. Alhamdulillah. The more you talk about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the more love you feel for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The more understanding, the more closeness you feel to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It comes with a lot of, really. It's like it, it's, 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 it's encouraged to sit down and talk about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His attributes and His names and His sifat, right? Like that you that you actually begin to you know process this world better, right? Because as you understand God better, right? So here Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, okay, so He says, you know, hatta taatiyahumul bayina. Right? What is this bayina? Rasulu min Allahi. Yatlu suhufa mutahara. Right, there are four things going on here. Right, in this ayat. Last week I didn't show the four things. Now I'm going to show it to you. The four things going on here. Rasul. So the first clear thing is the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min Allah. Right, that, so you can, you can actually break up your sentence into four parts. Rasul is one part. Min Allah is one part. Yatlu. Min, uh, one part. Suhufa mutahara. Is the last part, right? Four parts in this ayat, and every part has its tafsir. Right. So the first one, Rasulun. Right. So Rasulun, who is he? This person in front of you, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. He is a bayina. Right. He is a clear proof. And when you look at his character, you look at the way he carries himself. You look at the, the signs on his face, on his lineage, on his uh, on on his entire being. Right, he is a proof in himself, and he is a clear proof. Right, what other men for them they know he walks around with a, with a cloud over his head. You know, a cloud follows him everywhere he goes. <laughs> right, right, he is you know as as and, and they, they 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 saw him split the moon, right, half and half. Right, one went to the east, one went to the west. They saw it. Right, they saw that 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 water came out of his hands. Right, they saw so many miracles, oh, miracle after miracle after miracle on the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, on top of that, Rasulullah he changed, he, the, the qibla changed under his, uh, under his 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 his, his rule, right. So it was one, it was first was Jerusalem, then he went to the was to the Kaaba, and that was mentioned in their books. The final prophet will change the qibla. Right, it's bayina, bayina is so clear. It's clear to the people of the book. And it's clear to the mushrikin, it's clear to the uh, the polytheists. Right? Why is it clear to the polytheists? It is clear to the polytheists because they saw him growing up. They saw him from the time he was a baby, right, to now he is forty years old and declaring that he is a prophet. They saw for these forty years sign after sign after sign after sign right, of the greatness of this man. I right? they all knew it. The whole of Mecca, they knew that this boy was a special boy. All of them knew it. Right, so when 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 finally he he declared that he is a that he's, that he got revelation, he's a prophet. Right, to a lot of the the, the first few people who enter into Islam, it's no surprise. It's no surprise whatsoever. Right, because they saw it coming. Right, his his uncles, his uh his best friend, his you know his wife, Sayyidina Khadija was waiting for it. And right, we know in the story of Sayyidina Khadija, she was watching Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was thinking he is definitely the last prophet. She was watching him. To see when will the revelation come, <laughs> right? You know, Sayyidina Waraka was also watching. They were all watching him to see when the revelation will come. So, Subhanallah, it is clear, Rasul, right? This prophet in front of you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his his akhlaq itself is not like any human being, right? And that is of the science of the last prophet. We mentioned before the story of a Jewish rabbi, right, who uh, lend, who loaned to Rasulullah uh, some grain. I mentioned the story before. Right, and the, the Jewish rabbi said that, you know, of the signs that I, have, that I wanted to test of the last prophet, that they have not been able to test, right, is Halim. That means Halim, meaning he is somebody who is uh, calm, composed. I right, don't get angry. Right, he's not a, a person of temper. Right, but he's calm and composed. And that is a characteristic of a prophet. And the other uh, proof of, of prophethood is that the more someone acts in an ignorant and a foolish way towards you, right, the more dignified, Right, and kind, you know, your behavior towards them, right? That is of the signs of a prophet. That means the worse someone is towards you, the better you are 
towards them. Right, which is why he did what he did right, in the story. Right, just a, a brief recap of the story. Right, that uh, he came up to Rasulullah Sallam and he dragged him by the by the collar. Right, and then said that you know I know you were Bani Hashim. You never you never pay your debt. Right, and of course they had three more days left for the debt. Right, and Zainal Omar got angry and he and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me the the the, 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 the word and I will strike his neck. You know, I will kill him. And say now, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Omar, no, that's not the way. I rather you should tell me right, to pay my debts and tell him to ask nicely. Right? Instead of trying to kill people. <laughs> right? Let's just do this. Right? And then he told Sayyidina Omar to take the Jew, the Jew away right? and to give him his, uh, what, what, what Rasulullah Sallallahu owed him and to give him more right, because you frightened him. Right? So as compensation. Right? So when the Jews saw right, what, how Rasulullah Sallallahu responded right, to his uh, you know, foul behavior, Right, he knew that this was a sign. Right, sign of, only, only a prophet would do that. Right, only a prophet would do that. Right, so that is. So you see, the signs of prophethood is good character. Right, because a prophet he reflects. You see that when he comes to the address of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and Allah has names, and of Allah's names, right, there are names that human beings can take on to an extent, to a human extent. Right, so for example, the name of 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 mercy, you can take on that name to a human extent. Right, and there's a name of forgiveness. You can take on that name to a human extent. Right, when we learn about names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, we, you see it in the creation. You're able to witness al Qadir, right, the most powerful. You can witness him in the creation. Right, how you know it's found, you can see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Basir, right, the one who sees. And you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. Al Samir, right, the one who hears everything. Right, so you, you can you can you, you can have an experience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes, right? And then on top of that, you can actually reflect some of the attributes. Right. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is Al Ghafur, right, he is the most forgiving and he forgives all kinds of sins. Right, so you can reflect some of that. Right, and to forgive those who have harmed you. Right? And, then, and then, you know, go further than Al-Afu. Al-Afu is to forgive and to do good right, to those who have harmed you right, or those who have, you know, wronged you. So Allah subhanahu wa we know. Allah subhanahu wa He gives good to those who are disbelievers, the disobedient. The, Allah gives. Right? So we can actually take on the attribute. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the most perfect of all those who reflect Attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human limit. Right? So you don't say he reflects the attribute, right? Because nobody can ever reflect that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we say to the human limit, right? To the human understanding, to the human limit, right? We can reflect some of the attributes to a human extent. Right? And the most perfect person who has done so. Right, for every attribute that you can reflect, because not all attributes you can actually reflect. Right, for example, the attribute of you know, al-Khaliq, Allah is the creator, <laughs> that you can never, you can never you know, show that. Right? Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, al-Qadim, right? Qadim meaning there was no beginning for him. You can, ev- you can never reflect that one. Right? So you, can, you can experience it right, in that we believe that there was nothing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing will be after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our belief you know, in this sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, 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 so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as to the, to the attributes that can be possibly reflected to an extent in the human being, he was the most perfect. In reflection, right? the most perfect, which is why he's called the walking Quran. Sayyidina Aisha said, Kana Quran yamshi. Right? He was a Quran walking. Right? That was why he was clear. Right? Clear. Bayinas. It's so clear. Right? That, that Allah is really blaming them. Why are, you, why are you even denying this man? Why? How? How? The Jews is all in your book. Allah says, you know, those who, have even, those who have been given the book, they know him like they know their own sons even better. Because you don't even know your own children sometimes. Right? You think you know your children, you don't even know your own children. But they know the prophet even better than their own children. They could spot him a mile away. They knew he was a prophet. And right? the mushrikun, they saw him grow up. They had no doubt he was a prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That's the first part. Rasulun. Min Allah. Right, min Allah. Right, he could say Rasulullah. Right, the Prophet of Allah. Right, but Allah specifies min Allah. Right, it means sent specifically from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And this prophet is not, you know, just any 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 person. He is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The one that is being sent to you, because the Jews they used to fight, they used to to argue. And you find this in the Quran, right? But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blames them, and Allah says, you know, that uh, uh, I say, whosoever is a, is an enemy of Jibril, right? If any the enemy of Jibril, who is the enemy of Jibril? The Jews, right? They are enemies of Jibril. They hate Jibril. And why, what did Jibril do? Jibril is, a, Jibril is a, an angel. He's a messenger. He's a messenger. Right? He sends messages down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he goes back up. Like he's not doing anything. <laughs> right? But the Jews hate him. Right? Why do they hate him? Right? They hate him because they claim, they claim that Jibril, you know, are all spite for the Jews. You know, as if Jibril can have spite. Right, Jibril is an angel. <laughs> right. So they claim that Jibril, our spite for the Jews, right, chose to send the last message to an Arab. Right, because Jibril is like Jews. So now they're saying Jibril is racist. <laughs> right, this is what they say. You know, they, so they, they, they make up stuff and then they say, oh, Jibril, he's supposed to send it to us, right, but he just went to an Arab and gave it to the Arab. Right, so. Mm. That itself is the choice. Yep. If, if you look at it, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, there's a choice on Allah's part. Uh, that means not know why is mm. this race. Then, when suddenly the last prophet, Allah decides to have it uh, for the Arabs. The Arabs. Okay. So, like, of course, they will be asking why. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, but they need to ask also that Allah never promised them. <laughs> it was never a promise that it has to come from you guys. <laughs> like, anyway, there was never there was no promise. There was no promise. Like, yeah. Like, for, for them to yeah, why, why the this switch and <laughs> this switch. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay, one thing about about our belief in prophets, eh? Like while many prophets came from the Bani Israel. They are not limited to the Bani Israel. Right? Allah says in the Quran that every community had a prophet. Right? So we do believe that the Chinese had their own prophets before Rasulullah Islam. It's about before Rasulullah Islam. We believe that. Right? Because Allah says in the Quran that, um, that every community will have a wana. Every community. So worldwide, worldwide, if there was a community, there will be wanas. Right? There will be prophets sent down. Right? Which is why that if you look into interfaith study, Right, you do see the remnants of that. The, someone must have been telling them stuff. And if you look at Chinese Chinese um uh mythology and whatsoever, can if you go to Habibila, Habibila, can you there is this, this concept of heaven and hell there. And if you see that, the, I I remember seeing there was this thing about cutting the tongue. Right, it sounds very familiar, similar, similar to our hadith. <laughs> right, I mean, so there must have been someone. With them, <laughs> telling them this stuff, right? But then they they they, they changed it along the way, right? So it was lost, right? And of course, if you go back, 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 right? It was mentioned that when Islam first spread, right? The Sahaba went to China again, uh, and they and they began to see these Muslims and the akhlaq because there was no there was language barrier, right? They couldn't really you know uh da'wah, right? But uh, it's not I didn't went to China when I when I was in China they they, they said this to us, they had an emperor. Right from before us, some time, right, and that emperor was a well loved emperor, who preached, so they loved that emperor. I can't remember his name right now, <laughs> right. But Allah who Allah whether he was a prophet or because it's not un, uh, it's not you know uh, impossible, right? Because it was before us, so some so possible at the other prophets, right? And we know there are we are, there are hundred twenty four thousand prophets sent down, right, all over the world. We know that, and we know. So that means to say that they are with Bani Israel, that also is not true. Right? Because there are 124,000 all over the world. So, the, you see, when, when I was learning the... It's quite interesting to learn the, the history of Islam in China. You can go and study it. Yeah? If anyone has time, I'll go and study Islam, the Islam in China. Because when the Sahaba came, right, the Chinese very quickly took to Islam. Because it reminded them of the teachings of their emperor. Right, I mean, or who, whichever the emperor was, now, right? They very quickly took to Islam, right? But and and it was so much so that that the Sahaba thought that this land was going to be Muslim, right? It's recorded here, like so. I don't know where I learned all this stuff, right? but it's in my head. <laughs> I can't remember where I, I I learned all these things, right? But 
you can go and search lah. Go and search, go and do a research about it. But the thing about it was that when the communism came, it clamped down. Right? And then uh, if you go to the, they call, it, they call them the Huis. The Huis of China are the Muslim Chinese. Ah, the Huis. Ah, the... Uh, they were already they were already Muslim. They were already Muslim. They were already going to Indonesia. Ah. In Singapore, they were already in. I think was it Palembang or some part of Indonesia that is a they have a big community of Chinese Muslim. Chinese Muslim, eh? Yeah. The Mongols also took to Islam. Of Malaysia, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, Cheng, yeah. And, and even the Mongols they, they even though they 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 fought with the Sahaba or Tabi'in, right, they also became Muslim eventually. <laughs> they so they fought with the Muslim and then they became Muslim after that. Right. So so it's you know that why it's not the Prophet part lah, but basically they 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 there are remnants of 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 teachings. You know, and they even say that in India there are remnants right, of teachings, right? When I was learning Hinduism which is interesting, you know, I learned Hinduism. I, when I was in university, I was learning all this stuff. Right? Just in the interfaith, learning interfaith stuff. Right? So Hinduism, the, when you speak to the Brahmin, the, the, the monk himself said that they actually believe in a one powerful God. They, are, they believe in one God. Right? Then we asked him, oh, but all these idols around, around, around here. Then he said, oh, the idols are for the Parias. Right? The Brahmin, right, they only worship the one God. But that's only for the Brahmin. So that means they did a casting that only the elites of society has access to the one God. Uh, then, then, it, then he said, because I remember very clearly, he explained to us that all these small idols are the manifestation of the attributes of God. Hey, much familiar, right? I mean, so 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 like every nama right became a, became an idol. Uh, so so this is the idol of idol of, of good fortune, this is the idol of this, idol of that. So it's as if you have Allah's nine names and it's an image for Purpa name. So it's like that. So so then so then the, the, so they say that because our parias cannot understand the concept of one God. So he to us that, that to us. And the parias cannot understand. So we have to make for them idols for them to understand. Ah, that's how the Akida came about. <laughs> so the Akida came that way because of they look down on their parias and the parias cannot understand the concept of this one omnipotent, you know, powerful, majestic God that's above all. So they have to make small idols as an image and then this is uh, basically representations of the attributes of God. But the parias eventually began to worship the idols. <laughs> Interesting, eh? <laughs> so, but where did they get this idea of the one true God? And the attributes of God? Uh, someone must have told them about it. I, huh? Yeah, there was someone because you know someone must have because human beings can't figure this out, right? Someone must have been sent and told them about it. Right? So, so even the Indians had it. Even when I was in America, uh, the Native Americans, right? They, they, there was some concept, you know, of 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 godship, <laughs> you know, somehow it's all over the world. It's all over. So so go back to the question, eh? So Bani Israel, can so they have a lineage of prophets, right? They are for them is obvious because you know Nabi Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Right? But the thing about it is that uh, the rest of the world, the prophets are not really mentioned in the Quran. Right? The only prophets that are mentioned in the Quran are the prophets of Bani Israel specifically. And Allah Alam Allah knows why. Allah Allah's zooming in on them. <laughs> Allah Alam. Maybe towards the end of time we will see why right, the Jews are being highlighted a lot in the Quran. Right? Allah Alam Allah knows. Right, but um, the thing about it is that uh, they don't, they, 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 they fail to see. In fact, the Jews they, they knew that Nabi Ibrahim has another son. They knew of it. They know. They know Nabi Ibrahim has two wives, and one wife you have Nabi Ishaq, and the other wife you have Nabi Ismail. They reject Nabi Ismail. Uh, they don't want to to acknowledge Nabi Ismail. They know very well about Nabi Ismail, but they reject him. Right. So that's why, which is why in 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 Surah Baqarah, right, when Nabi Yaqub passes away, and Allah quotes Nabi Yaqub's word for word, and right? Nabi Yaqub's uh, last wasiat to his sons, and his sons are the 12 sons who make up the 12 tribes of the Jews, of Bani Israel. So Nabi Yaqub said to his son, so, 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 
So Allah says in the Quran, were you there? Were you there when Yaqub passed away? And when he when he advised his sons and he asked them, what will you worship after me? And they said, we will worship. It's in Surah Baqarah, right at the end of the first juice. We will worship your Lord and the Lord of Ibrahim, the Lord of Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, right, which means that the sons recognize Nabi Ismail. And Nabi Ismail was recognized. So Allah pulls it out. I said, you know about Ismail. So it's not that out of nowhere Muhammad came about. It's not out of nowhere. He is from the lineage of who? Nabi Ismail. Uh, it's just that this lineage did not have any manifestation of prophets, but your lineage did. But you're from the same lineage, Nabi Ibrahim. Uh, so there's an... Uh, it, Allah and of course, Allah is testing them. Huh? And Allah is testing them. Are you true to, to your book? Right? That's a surprise. And the last prophet is an Arab. Will you still believe? Right? When it's not in, in accordance to your own nafs, your own desire that it be kept. And of course, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, there of the scholars who have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gave the... It's Allah's plan. Like, it's about Allah's plan. The last prophet went to the, to the, to the Arabs and not the Jews, because they've been killing their prophets. Right? They've been killing their prophets, they've been going against their prophets. Nabi Isa is a classic case. And Nabi Isa is from them. Nabi Isa was a prophet right before Nabi Rasulullah and they were the ones who tried to crucify Nabi Isa. And they crucified someone else. Right? But they, who, who was the one who was crucifying? The Jews. It was the Jews right? who actually catch, caught the, the, the man who was made to look at Nabi Isa and it was the Jews who crucified. Huh? The 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 <laughs> yeah the men yeah so basically it was them right they killed Nabi Yahya and Allah in the Quran blames them right you dis you disbelieve in his message you have had so many prophets sent to you and you keep disbelieving right you keep earning the anger of Allah subhanahu wa taala and you keep killing your prophets like and now if Muhammad is nothing new. So Allah Allah said nothing new. They're gonna to try to kill him. <laughs> right, from day one, they will try to kill him. Right, from the moment they saw him, they tried to kill him. Right, and they've been sending. And actually, when you look at uh, Surah Nas, can we went to Surah Nas Surah Falak? Right, they've been sending sihir to him from from day one, tau. Right, but every sihir was deflected except for the last one. Allah allowed some effects to happen. Right, but they've been they've been trying to kill Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not anything new. <laughs> they've been trying. Even in Medina, they're supposed to be have religious with the, the Muslims. So it's important to learn Sira. So you see this this these people. Any question? They don't like the hukum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as as easy as that. So you see, even even if it's from their own line, their own blood. If they came with laws that they didn't like, they just kill. Uh. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. <laughs> so the thing about it is that, you know, Allah why it is. You know, because... With all that history going on, aren't you one why Allah still tries with them? Give up, eh? Give up with them. <laughs> Yeah, we should be more good in the world than this Bani Israel. Allah knows why. Subhanallah. Because they they are a group of people who are very interesting. <laughs> Even till today. They are a group that Allah has given intellect, eh? Allah gave them intellect. Oh they have they have intellect given. <laughs> But it's all tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why, you know, the chosen race and whatsoever. Allah alam why. And they have sihir with them. Right? Allah points out in Surah Baqarah, right? Uh, you know, when they were called, told to believe in all in the book and the prophets, they fought the shayateen. From the, the kingdom of Nabi Sulaiman, there were shayateen, you know, that was teaching sihir. Right? So they found the books of magic. Right? And then, uh, to Dulela. Till today is being practiced. Right, that's where it came from. <laughs> right, alhamdulillah. Uh, so, so you see the Arabs. Like, go back to your question. Eh, about the Arabs, Allah allowed the last prophet to come out from the Arabs, right? And and the ulama they do. Of course, these are all what human beings we think, 
you know why Allah chose the Arabs and whatsoever then and why Arabic you know will be a very foreign language to most people at the end of time right you know why subhanallah you know you, you go into these kind of questions so the thing about the Arabs right is that the last prophet and you see the Arabs they were barbarians they were always at warfare they were <laughs> all kinds of you know <laughs> until now <laughs> quarrelsome <laughs> Allahu Alam, right? But Rasulullah was an Arab, right? Alhamdulillah, right? Um, and it could be, right, that at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi it could be so. All what those scholars have mentioned, you know, if you read the books of Sirah, you will see, you know, why, why the Arabs and so on, right? Is that um, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the thing about the Arabs is that they are people who are very strong in memorization. Uh, they are very strong, right? There is one thing about them. Right? They hear one thing, they memorize it. Right, one time, one time off. Wait, now I don't know lah. Back then, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the like, but for us, even if I say something in English, you be like, eh, what? Like, <laughs> like you can write it down straight away, can? Even if it's in English, your own language, you can't do it. And but for them, they can hear it one time and they can just you know repeat the entire thing. She Hamza tells a story about uh, this Arab that he was with, and and they they witnessed a fight between two people of a different race. A different language. So this Arab was sitting there and he saw the fight. Right? And then one hit the other and whatsoever. So the police came and they went to investigate. Right? And so they came up to this Arab guy who didn't know the, the language at all. And he's a, a you know a Bedouin, you know, sort of like a tribal Bedouin Arab. So he came up to him and he said again, okay, you know what, I don't know what happened, but I witnessed it, but I don't know what happened, but I can repeat to you what they said to each other. And in their language. He has no clue what he said. But he can repeat exactly the words. And he did. He repeated exactly the words. <laughs> and the police could find, figure out who was actually, uh, you know, at, uh, at fault. Imam Shafi'i was known to do that. Imam Shafi'i, he could hear something and that's it memorized. Right? And it was once in the, in, the, in, the, in the class of Imam Malik. Imam Shafi'i was a student of Imam Malik. Sorry, I go back to the tafsir. You know right? Imam Shafi'i, he, he didn't have a pen with him, paper, nothing. He just sat there with his finger, he did this. So, he was just doing this. <laughs> and Imam Malik thought that he was you know, playing a fool in the class. So Imam Malik put him after class and said, What are you doing in class? Like, why are you like, you know? And he said that I was just memorizing. Then Imam Malik said, Memorizing what? Right? Then he, Imam Shafi repeated the entire class word for word. <laughs> I can't remember. Very, very young, right? Yeah, very young. He was very young. Mm-hmm. The whole class by Imam Malik, he repeated word for word. Then Imam Malik knew this, this boy was... Uh, <laughs> and so, of course, they, I mean, there were those, you know, of those... They, 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 Imam Shafi would... would to point his, his intellect, eh, his intellect. He would have to cover this page so he won't memorize it before the other page. <laughs> so he memorized the page in order. You know, he memorized the page before the other page. So he had to cover first so he would memorize that one. Because the one he looked, he memorized. Right, subhanallah. But the errors one thing they were known for the sharp memory. This is why we have you no know, hundreds and thousands of hadiths with us today, because of the sahaba. They memorize. And for me I can see from a hadith, Ya Allah, I'll pour over it, you know, for hours, for days, before I can even memorize the hadith. Then when I stop uh, revising it, I forget. You know, that's how our memories are. But for them they he wanted Sina Buhurada, he wants his one time, hafal, memorize. That's one thing about the Arabs. Second thing is that they are people of honor. It means if they promised, they will for them khiana, right? Treachery is not in their vocabulary. Even to the zaman as goes on is now. Zaman. They were people of, of honor and of word. Right? So even though they were disbelievers, they were of honor and of word. <laughs> now Allah. Now Allah. So unlike the Jews who were very much on khiana, right? They were very much on treachery. And they proved it over and over and over again in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until today. Right? In the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until today, they were betrayed. They were betrayed without any, they weren't even flinch. They were just betrayed and lie to their, to their, to their tongue. Right? Uh, the Arabs, they don't lie. Abu Jahal did not lie. He's not a liar. It's Abu Jahal, Abu Jahal. But he's not, you know, they, they, they would, they, 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 you know, if you ask point blank, that he's a prophet, yeah, he's a prophet, you know he's a prophet, that kind of thing. You know, Abu Sufyan, when he was asked by uh, Caesar, 
right uh, Kisro right, in Arabic and Caesar the, the Roman king right, to describe the prophet he described and he was at the point he was not a Muslim he described exactly as it was he didn't change anything right, he exactly, was honest honesty Rasulullah was brought from Mecca to Medina by a guide who was not Muslim he was not Muslim right? and on the neck of Rasulullah was a hundred camels at that time dead or alive a hundred camels Right, but because he was paid, right, you know, he had like, like there was a fee given to him. It was not hundred camels, but it was a small fee. But amana, amana, they were full of amana. Right, so so when Islam came to them, right, and they saw the truth of it, they held on and they refused to let go. That was one thing. Right, I mean, amana, amana, they were they were they were, they were true to their word. They memorized easily, which is why they quickly became the best of nations. Very quickly, they became the best of nations, and they did not, you know, go against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so Allah wa you know why Allah subhanahu wa chose the Arabs. Right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But we do know, right, that um, the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did say, right, uh, to Sayyidina Salman. Right, Sayyidina Salman was not an Arab, but he said to Sayyidina Salman, "Oh Salman, don't dislike me." Then Sayyidina Salman said, how can I ever dislike you? You're the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how can I ever dislike you? Then he said, when you dislike the Arabs, then you have disliked me because <laughs> I am Arab. So when I, heard, when I learned that hadith, I was like, oh no, Sayyidina Muhammad. Right? So whichever Arab that you meet, <laughs> you must just, you know, don't say anything. <laughs> Even if they annoy you, you go to Mecca. <laughs> you go to Jeddah. Right? You go to, you know, Even if they annoy you, you're supposed to zip it. Just don't say anything because Rasulullah was Arab. Right? Just don't say it. Just don't say it. <laughs> Just that person. Nah. Just say that, don't say that Arab. Say that person. <laughs> right? He's a cheat. If he does cheat people, you know. That, that person. Don't say the Arabs. Don't say, don't say Arabs. Right? Just say that person. As with all races, you shouldn't say, you know, that Indians are as such, you know, Malays are as such, or Chinese are as such. If it's negative, lah. When you say positive, say positive, uh, all you want. Right. But we're not allowed to say, like, the no, Chinese are uh, whatever, you know, in a negative way. Right. Not allowed. <laughs> a lot of changes are in our speech. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alright, Rasul min Allah. Right, min Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not any prophet. Right, he was indeed sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Jews, you mentioned, the Jews were rejecting him, right? And saying that he's not from the same line as the prophets, right? He's making it up. He's a liar. He's a what? So it's all lies, you know. But Allah is saying, no, he's a prophet from Allah and you all know Allah. Right? You all know very well Allah. You know Allah very well also, right? So they have been, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, for, for generations, right? So they know all about God subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yatlu, yatlu, right? It is in the present tense form, right? Meaning that he's continuously reciting, right? From the purified pages, right? Continuously reciting, right? Meaning that he is a living Quran, right? So yatlu, right? He's reciting at all times, and he is living it at all times. You see this, so the proof is a prophet. Second so proof, you know he's from God. You know it. And he's from God. Third thing, right, he is reciting. Uh, the other the other mu'jizah here is that he is supposed to be illiterate. Right? So he's supposed to be not able to read nor write. Right? So when he's coming here at, out of nowhere and he's reciting verses that even the Arabs themselves at that time, they could not categorize the Quran. They had categories for their poetry. They had. And they could categorize in the sajarah. They had all kinds of categories for the poetry. Quran fit nowhere. Quran fit nowhere. At the same time, they knew that Quran was beyond their own poetry. They knew it. And they, 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 could, they, they could see the beauty, the magnificence, the, the entire thing about the Quran. They were, they were basically you know, dumbfounded by it. They, they couldn't comment right, on this Quran. So for them, you know, all of them knew. So yet to look. Right, that is this is so obvious. Right, the verses. Even for us as 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 non uh, Arab speakers, when you hear the Quran being recited, there's no doubt. There's something going on in your soul, right, in your heart. There's something that's going on. Right, so 
you know, the Quran itself, when it's being recited, even without understanding, right, your soul is telling you there's something in there. Right, there is something in these verses. Suhufa mutahharah, pure verses, right, pure pages. Right, of this Quran. Right. So, and the last one is the proof. Right. The last proof is that uh, these pages can never be adulterated, ever. I said the mutahara part. Right. Suhufam mutahara. Right. Mutahara has two meanings. Right. First one, it is purified in itself. Right. And it purifies. Right. It purifies you when you recite the Quran. Right. So, 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 so the last part is that this Quran, Allah is saying here, it will never be changed. Ever, right? unlike the previous scriptures that the Jews and the Christians they could change their scriptures, this Quran is not it's not allowed to be changed. Right? No one, nobody can touch the Quran. Cannot, right? So it is pure. It will remain pure from God Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself. See the ayat I am by now. Alhamdulillah, all the the, the the proof you know is every word. Like, this is bayina. It's so clear. You have no way around this. The whole affair is so clear. It's from God. He's a prophet. Right? He's reciting out of nowhere verses that is you cannot doubt. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa says in Surah Baqarah from the very beginning, la la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin. Right? Alif lam mim zalim kitab la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin. Right? So alif lam mim. Right? There is a, the book. There is no doubt in it. It is a guidance for those who have taqwa. I said, Subhanallah. So, t- proof of the proof of the proof of the proof. Then Allah says, Fiha kutubun qayyima. Right? You have a question? No. Right. Fiha kut. You have a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you were saying that uh, other scriptures were changed, right? For mm-hmm. Quran and Islam. It's also, some, I mean, of course, it's by Allah's will, but it's also through the Arab. Because Arabs to be the you know um the comfort and image, but because they are the people of their words, that's how yeah. their Quran was able to. It was yeah. to other nations like the Jews, what the Jews did. <laughs> but I think Quran would definitely be changed. Could be also possible. Could be the the, 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 the Sahaba, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Bible and all that, it would change. Yeah. Basically, the, okay, the the Torah, the Torah was changed in two ways, right? The first way that the Torah was changed was the laws itself. They were not happy with the laws, right? So the riba part, oh, that one's more buang, right? Throw away riba. Like, riba can halal, you know, <laughs> because the Jews they 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 they're masters of riba, right? they're masters of riba. And the other part that, and of course they have, but most of their Sharia they keep. Most of them. I had a Jewish friend who was, you know, Orthodox Jew. They're very strict about their aura and their prayer and their fasting, and they they have it, they have it. And th- those who are Orthodox, right? They are basically they're quite strong with it, right? But there are laws in there that are changed, you know, whatever. Actually, we know very little about, about Judaism, Judaism, eh? We <laughs> exposed to uh, the Bible and the changes yeah. of the Bible. But yeah, yeah the uh, Jews. We talk about our hatred for the Jews, but yet we do not know anything about, about the Jews. And you said all the changes and the Pendle will have that. <laughs> yeah, Singapore not many Jews, but they exist. They are there's 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 yeah. synagogues in Singapore, yeah. guys. Like A lot of Christians. The thing about Jews is that they don't um uh, dawa. Because for them to be Jew is by blood, by blood. Ah, by the mother, by the mother, by the mother. Which is interesting because Nabi is uh, <laughs> by the mother. <laughs> can. Yeah. Supposedly converted as we you know active in the synagogue in Singapore. So I'm one, I mean this was in yeah. the first time three years ago. So I'm wondering how he converted when there is no such thing as Yeah, they don't they don't like it they also. Don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it. They they like to keep it to themselves, right? So but basically when it comes to Judaism, okay, we they are people they are the Ahl Kitab. Right? They are Ahl Kitab. 
Um, I have I have a friend who's a Jew. <laughs> they're okay, right? They're, I mean, they're 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 people. They're people, right? And they have their beliefs. And if they are orthodox, if they are, and you can look into the and you took other lah documentaries all that, you know, on orthodox Jews, right? Whereby they do cover up, cover up, uh, the woman, right? They don't they don't go in the camera, right? They're very orthodox lah, and they and they they do practice polygamy and the the gloss of the scripture lah. It's all that. It's all that. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, they don't take pork. They don't take alcohol. They have their own the kosher. Yeah, in fact, there is more strict because kosher laws of kosher is more strict than halal laws. So we can actually consume kosher, but they have allowed their alcohol now. So now I won't say that if you see kosher sign, eat it. Check is there alcohol, right? Because they have changed that law. <laughs> And now allowed alcohol under kosher, right? So, so for us, while kosher is more strict when it comes to the meat part, right? But just check the alcohol because I know of Muslims when they check suitable for vegetarians, they just go and eat it. Alcohol, alcohol. <laughs> check your alcohol. You know, is there alcohol in the in the ch- sorry, chocolates, ice cream have alcohol? So rum, you know, whatever lah. Check lah. Eh. Right, don't be don't be naive. You know, if can have a sign. <laughs> right, just be careful with that. You mentioned about kosher being we being able to eat kosher. Yeah, but now the again, we we no longer consider that as people of the book or the yeah. they have already gone astray. So in my opinion, the kosher in these days is not very good. It is, yeah. But uh, yeah, Allah alam, you know, just if you want to sign, right? But uh, but by right, by right lah, eh, the kosher laws are more strict than halal laws. By right, by right, right? The kosher laws are more strict than halal laws. My friend who was who's Jew, right? She refused to eat um any food when she was in Singapore. When she came to visit in Singapore, she refused. She refused to eat the food except for purely vegetarian food, right? So, ah, uh, they have laws about fish. Not about the, the kitchen being kosher. Yeah, Not yeah. They, they, they have a lot of laws, more than us. For us, seafood is halal, halal. Right? For them, the fish, there is a law about it. I can't remember what it was. Right? But there is something about some fish are halal, some fish are not halal. Right? Yeah, and but that is the Moses law. Okay? So we must, Nabi Moses law. Uh, it's from the Torah. It's the Moses law. Right, because sometimes I, I like Muslims, they were like, "Why so strict?" Oh? Yeah. Is Nabi is Moses law? No. Like I don't know about their their law, <laughs> but oh, for, us. Oh, for us, for us, we there are laws also. Yes, um, in the Shafi Madhab, ah, uh, Shafi Madhab, mm-hmm. Shafi Madhab, all the sea creatures are permitted for Shafi Madhab, Shafi Madhab, for Hanafi Madhab, there's a difference of opinion. Yes. Mm. There's a difference of opinion, yeah, yeah, and and in fact, uh, yeah, yeah, crab. So okay, yeah. So so for me, um, I actually don't eat them, <laughs> right? Uh, because of the I mean, it's mentioned that it is macro, right? In other mazhabs, right? So just you don't really need them. <laughs> you can live without them. It's okay. But eat them sometimes. <laughs> I like them, <laughs> but it's because my husband doesn't eat them, so like I kind of like grew into it. So, but I used to like prawns. <laughs> but there is there are laws about it, so we need to just you know open up our horizons. Right? There are laws right, around these things. Right. So the thing about the Jews is that any uh, Muslim Muhammad okay fiha kutubum qayyima. Can't remember why we got into the discussion. <laughs> Right, right, so in there, right, in this, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He separated the parts suhufum mutahara fiha kutubum qayyima. Right, so there is, it is the same thing about the Quran, right, but they're separated into, into two ayats. Right, so suhufum mutahara, right, a, 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 a scripture, right, that cannot be adopted. Okay, about that, the scripture of the Christians is Injil. Right, the Bible is not the scripture of the Christians. It is not. It is the writings of saints. Right, so the Bible is nothing to do with the Injil. So the Old Testament, New Testament, ah, not the Bible. The Old Testament has remnants. Remnants of Nabi Isa's uh, book. How about the Gospel? I don't know what's the Gospel. <laughs> 
that one I tak belajar I didn't learn about the gospel I'm not so sure what's the gospel Is it by the scenes? Is that they have the book of Luke The book of Matthew The book of John And whatsoever It's all scenes Scenes I, And I asked my Christian <laughs> like yeah, like maybe like more more Ghazali's books, you know, more Haddad's books, you know, like the scholars have written their books, you know, to give advice to people. So their Bible is somewhat like that, right? So it's not the word of God, and they know it's not the word of God. They know, they're actually aware of it. They know the Bible is not the word of God, right? Uh, and they have they're fine with it. <laughs> it's not an issue to them. Because I asked my friend before, and I was like, "Don't you know it's not the word of God?" Yeah, we know. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, really strong lah. So for them, it's it's a book of guidance yeah. for them. Ah, uh, they book. It's like you open Ihya Alamudin. We know it's not the word of God, right? But we uh follow it. We follow Ihya Alamudin. In some some sense, ah, jengitu, right? It's like that, right? So no, Allah <laughs> alam. Uh, but they know it's not from Nabi Isa alaihi salam. They know it's not from Nabi Isa alaihi salam. Nabi Isa's book is lost, right? Or adulterated, right? Very much adulterated. Okay, this side is this ayat fiha kutubu qayyima, right? Separated from suhuf mutahara, right? Because suhuf mutahara shows that it will never be adulterated. Fiha kutubu qayyima shows the laws in this book, right? Kutub kutub means books, but it also means laws. Right? When Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Quran, kutiba alaihi musiyam, right? Fasting has been written onto you, meaning that fasting has been Ordain onto you. It has been prescribed onto you. Fasting I means it's, it's compulsory for you to fast. Right. So the word kataba, writing in Arabic, can also mean ordered. Right. It has been written onto you. It means it has been ordered onto you to do as such. Right. So fiha kutubun qayyima. That means in it is upright rulings, upright uh, laws. Right. So they is separate from the suhu mutahara because the suhu mutahara is to show that this book will never be adulterated. And, and and at the same time, this book will have laws in there that cannot be changed. Right? You cannot change these laws. Right? So Allah is highlighting right, that, that this book will be a book of law. Right? There are laws in this Quran that you have to hold on to. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He stops there and He goes back to these people. So the bayina only two, for, for, for two ayats. Right? The first part about the Prophet from Allah reciting. Purified scriptures, in this purified scriptures, upright commandments, upright laws. Right, meaning that you're supposed to hold on to these laws. Your books, right, or people of the book, right, you have changed the book. It means you, they are no longer surah humutahara, but they are adulterated books, right, and they don't have any more of their uh, upright laws because you change all the laws. And you remove laws. As I was mentioning, the 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 the, the Jews they change their book in two ways. One is by the laws; they change the laws, and the other one is that they change the description of the final prophet. Right? They preserve it for a long, longest time. Right? They preserve the description for a longest time. But when they saw the final prophet, they went back to their book and they changed the description, so that it will not match. The final prophet, and that is also one of the why you might you might say you know why the Arabs were the ones who got the Quran, right? Because with the Jews, with the Jews, they could easily change stuff because the the the, the book was only kept by the rabbis, so only like the ulama, so called, eh? So only the, the the top people, I could actually have access to the scriptures. So Allah in the Quran Himself says that most of them don't know their book, most of them. Don't know their book, right? Because the the the, the elite don't allow the people, the, the the common person or the common Jew to have access to their own book, so they can easily change stuff. Right? Imagine it's right now in, in amongst the Muslims, if anyone dare to change the Quran, right? You have a billion Muslims out there who have memorized Quran, right, Who will say nonsense, right? So this is how you things are being you know preserved when the community that you have people who have memorized the Quran. All over the world. So now it's impossible to change it because there's so many people who memorize the Quran. And the Quran is preserved in the in the mind, in the hearts of people, and not in pages. Right? So who preserves our Quran? Not the books. Who preserves them? The Muslims themselves. And right? when they memorize the Quran, right now worldwide. Worldwide. Right. So it's impossible now to change anything. 
And no, there's no few Muslims on top who can change the Quran secretly and nobody else knows about it. It's impossible. Right? But in, for, for, for the people at that time, the Jews, they could, they actually could, right? they could change because the, the, the common person doesn't know about what is in their book. They could change it. Right? And if you see, in our book, the Prophet is supposed to be black. Oh, Muhammad's not black. And they say, the Prophet is supposed to have curly hair. Oh, he says not curly. Oh, so they, 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 they would change stuff. Literally, they, they actually change all those things. He's supposed to be very skinny and tall and lanky. Oh, he's not. Okay. No. <laughs> it's so, you know, and, but the, the, the rabbis who became Muslim and they memorized all those texts, they would say, yeah, Rasulullah, they changed the whole thing. <laughs> right? They would just say, you know, like, like expose right, uh, these, these liars lah, on what they have done. Allahu Alam. Alhamdulillah. Right. So then Allah subhanahu goes back and says, وَمَا تَفَرُّقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ Right. And the people who have been given the book. Right. So you see, there is a very clear change in term, in terminology here. The first ayat, right, so if you're memorizing this, you might go in circles. Right. Because, you know, بَيِّنَةِ بَيِّنَةِ Right. And you memorize it, you go in circles. Right. So here, Masayana Muhammad, the first ayat, it says, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Right, those who disbelieve from the people of the book. People of the book. Okay? The fourth ayat says, الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ Right, those who have been given the book. Okay? Right. What's going on here? Right, they're both people of the book. Right, one, they are described to be those who disbelieve from the people of the book. Right? So, so it's, it's a full description. Right? Those who believe from Ahlul Kitab, from the people of the book. Second one, those who have been given the book. Right? Allah basically just brought them down a level. That right? means reduce their status. So at first they are Ahlul Kitab, people of the book. That means people who stand by the book and who, you know, honor the book and they act upon the book. But because of your insolence and your, you know, uh, uh, stubbornness, you know, and your, your kufr and how they have been disbelievers, now they have been reduced to be, you were given the book. But you're not people of the book. You're just those who happen to have the book with you. Right? So you see how their, their station is reduced from being people of the book to now people who have the book. You happen to have the book, you're not people of the book because you don't stand by this book. Right? So it's a it's an immediate reduction. Right? After they, re- they reject Rasulullah and they reject the Quran, straight away you're, you're, you're called Utul Kitab. You're not called Ahlul Kitab anymore. You're called Utul Kitab. You're being given the book and you are no more the people who hold the book. That's all you are. Right? Uh, and Allah subhanahu says, وَمَا تَفَرَّقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ right? And now, the word tafarraqa is used. Right? Tafarraqa right, is a stronger word right, than mumfakina. Right? And mumfakina is to, you know, to, 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 to dispute. So the first ayat is that the Ahl Kitab, it means people who have knowledge of the book. People who have knowledge of the book and they're supposed to be people who stand by the book. Right, they begin to dispute when the clear proof came to them. Now Allah says, now with this clear proof, proof they begin to tafarraqa. Tafarraqa means really be rivals to each other. They are really now broken apart. They don't want to be united whatsoever at all. Right, these people who have been given the book because they don't stand by the book. Right, they refuse to stand by the book. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now mentions what is the problem here? Why? Why must they disperse? Why must they, they break apart after this clear bayina came to them, this clear proof came to them? And Allah says, Wama umiru, right, to, 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 to appeal to their senses, right, why are you fighting? Right, what is so wrong about this Prophet and this Quran? Right, why are you so against it? What is in there? Right, means look at the message. Right, look at the message. And sometimes, even as, as Muslims, we see the outward and we don't see the message. This is going on with the Jews here in this in the surah. Right? They're seeing the outward of the Prophet, right? his Arab. They're not looking at the message. So Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they were not 
commanded except to worship Allah sincerely in their religion. Hunafa. Hunafa is the word for Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, al-Hanif. Right? The one who is firm and straight on this religion. Right? Not swing anywhere. Right? Hunafa, straight up, upright. So Allah is saying, you see, these, these people who are, who are being so disunited and fighting each other, why? Did the Prophet come to a different set of laws? Right? Is it a different set of laws that he came with? Is it something completely different? No, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Wa ma umiru illa liya'budullah. Except to worship Allah. Mukhlisin. Right? Be sincere, O oh people of the book. Be sincere. You, if you are sincere to your book, you know he is a prophet. And you will not turn away from him. Mukhlisin lahuddin. Right, be sincere to Allah. Lahu here refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be sincere to Allah right, in your religion. Hunafa upright. Wa yuqimus salata wa yuqtuz zakata. Right, and to establish your prayer and to give your charity. And the prayer and the zakat has been there since the Nabi Adam's time. All the way up. Right, so every prophet right, will have prayer and zakat. As part of the Sharia, right? it is clear. Right? In fact, they even have Hajj as part of their Sharia, and they have fasting also. Right? All of them have this as part of their Sharia. They have the Shahada, they have the prayer, they have Zakat, they have Hajj, they have fasting. It's it's all there. It's nothing new. So Allah was say, why, 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 why are you all fighting? And what is going on? Nothing new. And and Zalika Din Qayyima, and this is the religion that is upright, meaning that all Muslims. Don't fall into this trap. You see, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and reflects and makes us reflect on the people of the book, it's actually warnings onto you Muslims. Because now you all are people of the book. You have been given a book and the book is Quran. Right? So now, now you are in the same position right now because you have been given the book. So what must you do? You must stand up by this book. You must be firm with this book. And what is at, at the, the core of the matter? Prayer. Right, it means worship Allah sincerely. And that is shown through your prayer. Right, where is your prayer? Right, so here the ulama, they will go into a tafsir about prayer. Right, showing the most important, the most, the most essential thing in our religion is prayer. Five times a day. To the death of Rasulullah Right, he kept saying, your prayer, your prayer. Right, as-salah, as-salah. Right, where is your prayer? Are you praying? Sayyidina Umar, when he was stabbed, eh, Sayyidina Umar, when he was, uh, before he died, he was about to lead the subo prayer, right? and he was stepped from the back, right, by a by a majusi, by a fire worshipper, right, for with a with a knife that is, with a dagger that is uh that is poisoned, right, and he was not dead yet, right? he was still alive. So you know, Omar, he was so strong, <laughs> right? and his son would say, you know, the the, the, the step, he stepped him a few times. You know, really, you know, step through Sayyidina Omar a few times. And Sayyidina Omar, uh, uh, before he collapsed, he put the person behind him forward to be the imam. Like, at, that, at that point, he can even think what to do. You know, I have to collapse, pull someone behind, be the imam. Continue the prayer, right? So when he collapsed, and then when he came to, the, he, uh, the first thing he asked, have they finished their prayer? Like, are they? Equal was subo. You know, have you all finished praying? Yes, they have finished praying. Okay, good. Pray. At least you all have prayed. You know, so Allah. Rasulullah so Allah, so same thing. When he was um, not well, and he came out for Isha, if I'm not wrong, was Isha prayer. He called for Isha prayer, but he kept collapsing right, because of the fever that was that had afflicted him. And he, he kept putting cold water onto himself and he would get up right, and he would collapse. Then he would, he would, he would pass out right, and then they would put cold water again and he would get because the fever was you know, intense. So, so when every time he would get up, he would, be, he would say, Have they prayed? Have they prayed? And then it would be said to him, No, they're waiting for you. And the jama'ah is waiting for you to come out. Uh, eventually, after he realized he couldn't go out and pray right, and lead the jama'ah, he said, Command Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, tell Abu Bakr to go and to, to be the, their imam. Right? And Rasulullah prayed in the room with Sayyidina Aisha. Right? So Sayyidina Abu Bakr was told to be the imam uh, for the Muslims. And that is one of the indications that he will be the khalifa right, after Rasulullah wasallam. So the prayer, you know, and Rasulullah said in the hadith that nothing separates a believer from this belief except the prayer. Just the salat. Right, and as well, we are in a time whereby the prayer is, is gone. Right, five times a day on time. Right, if you can find, you know, uh, how many youth, how many of our secondary school kids, right, praying their zuhur, their asar, 
you know how many of you know subhanallah you know and we know as we as as growing up how many people actually around us were, were praying when we were our, our our friends you know in secondary school in jc university how many people were actually praying all right so prayer is the you know and in the hadith that says that the first thing of the about the prayer that will be lost is the khushu there's the first thing to be lost and <laughs> it's gone <laughs> and the last thing to be lost is the physical movements itself Right, that will also be lost, right, amongst the Muslims. Right, that they actually don't. You know, in our time, if someone prays five times a day, they will be considered to be religious. Right, but whereas is the is the is the the most basic thing to be a Muslim is to pray five times a day. So Allah says, it's not. So Allah, Allah, Allah says to worship Allah sincerely, and this is shown where in your prayer five times a day. You never leave this prayer, and then on top of the prayer, wa, you to zakah. And you were commanded to give charity, right? Zakat, and that was what what that was the thing that people actually went against in Al Bakr when Rasul passed away. The Muslims they refused to pay the zakat because they would say we only pay our zakat to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not to Abu Bakr. So saying Abu Bakr, he he rose up and he said that no, right? The zakat is Allah's, right? it's Allah's haq. Right? Allah has commanded the zakat whether or not the Prophet is with us. Right, you know, as you would pray, whether or not the Prophet is with us, you will still pray. So you will give a zakat. Right, why you to zakata wa qayyima, which means that this religion right, is only upright if people worship Allah sincerely and if people uh, was were to pray and to give zakat. And the moment these things all collapse, the religion would collapse. Right, there is no more. There is no more religion. Right, if your prayer is not there, your zakat is not there. Right, and the zakat is what uh, Habib was mentioning today about zakat. That when zak- if zakat is given, it's full right. Eh? And it's a hadith whereby uh, Rasulullah said that Allah takes what is compulsory from the rich and gives it to the poor, and it will suffice the poor right, of the meaning. And what is compulsory from the rich suffices the poor. And there's a hadith. Right, what is compulsory on the rich suffices the poor. And if zakat is given, it's true, right? There will not be a single poor person on this planet. Right? If zakat was practiced, is how it should be practiced. So the very fact that we have poor people, even in Muslim lands, that means zakat is not being practiced. That's how it was. Uh, Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, who is the great grandson of Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu, he, during his time, right, within two years, when he came to become the Khalifa, Right, and he was a man of was upright, right? And he was, you know, a Khalifa. When he came to, to be a Khalifa, he was before he was very rich. When he became a Khalifa, he left all his riches. Right? He gave away everything. Right? Because he has to be with the people. Right? These are the people of the past, you know, our leaders, eh? right? They will leave their money, you know. And they, but he was so just in his, the time he was a Khalifa, right, that when Zakat when when, when they got the Zakat and they had wealth, they could not find anybody to give the wealth to. There was no poor person around. So they would search among, and they would, and they would, they would, they would, they would announce the zakat to be given out. Anyone who, 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 who qualifies, come and claim your zakat. Nobody would come because nobody qualified <laughs> for, the, for the zakat. So they had wealth, you know, as well because of how he established zakat in the land. So it's, I don't know, it's you know, the laws of God. Only laws of God. Like human beings can't figure this out. Whereby everybody, you know, how much to take from the rich to give to the poor, that would satisfy the poor, right? Allah says no, it's enough. You know, just just fold the zakat, it's done. Right? Subhanallah. You know, the zakat itself is a Subhanallah, a gift from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And I will pause there, inshallah. You all look so tired. Seven. <laughs> right, ten o'clock. Eh, how long did it last? There's two two reasons, right? It could be that uh, the Muslims are not giving zakat. I means the rich are not giving zakat. Because zakat is of two forms, right? Zakat fitri, which is on everybody, and zakat harta. Right? Zakat harta is the one. Right? Zakat fitri, right? It does, um, it does cover, right? Uh, because it, but it has to be in food. Zakat fitri has to be in, you know, green. Right? We pay in money, but then they will just get the green later on. Right? Uh, but zakat harta is the one, the zakat of wealth. The rich are not giving their zakat. Yeah, so that could be that. Or, or it could be that those who have collected the zakat are 
not distributing it well or according to proper law. Right. So it could be either way. Right. So whoever is responsible, there will be a lot to answer for on the judgment. It's very scary. It's very scary. When I was in NUS, and I'm sure you all know, Mu'is gives zakat for our our activities in NUS MS. They give, which I felt was yeah. I don't know. It's not that one. It's it's supposed to be that one. <laughs> yeah, but when I was there, I realized that I actually realized that, and I and I felt very unsettled about it. Like it was, I didn't feel that it was right. Correct, then. Betul then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know whose money is is. Because wakaf uh, money distribution, which is meant to be for certain purposes, they were also uh, taken like me, and they were not disbursed according to the wakaf. So, uh, yeah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Because, like, for example, the money.